What's happening guys? My name is Robert Hagedorn and today I'm going to take you through the steps on how to create a photorealistic painting. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing that you want to do is have an idea of what you want to paint. I do recommend going out into the actual world and bringing in your own reference pictures. And today we're going to be painting a piece that's located right here in my hometown in Paseo Nuevo, Santa Barbara. Alright, in step two of this process we're going to be creating the line work for this piece. So I say it's very crucial to start off with very strong line work. This will help create a foundational structure for your composition. In this example, I'm using a technique known as linear perspective. This is a method of drawing three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional canvas. In the reference picture, we are facing two directions adjacent from each other. For an accurate depiction, I decided to use two-point perspective for my foundation. Quick note, I'm using the app Procreate, which has perspective tools built into its program. This is extremely helpful because it allows one to draw in perspective freely without worrying about lines hitting the vanishing points. All right, so moving on to step three, we are gonna put some lighting and shadow into our piece. So one of the first things you'll notice is that the background is gray rather than white. Working in lights and shadows, this is the perfect mid-ground to work off of. Before jumping into color, it's important to understand how hues are affected by lights and shadows. A good practice is to place a black and white filter over your source image. This can be a great stepping stone towards learning how to perceive lighting through hue value. In this painting, I modified my line work and values to the bare bones of the structure. One of the challenges I faced was organic objects such as people, plants, and small details that were obstructing the view of linear geometry. Alright, so our fourth and final step is putting tones and hue value into our piece. So this is personally my favorite part of the whole process. This is the moment where your painting becomes alive. I recommend breaking down your composition piece by piece to focus on each area of the painting. In order to understand real life color, you must first understand the world of tones. Tones are a combination of black, white, and color. By studying the main photograph, you can learn to read tones found in real world lighting conditions. Quick tip, it even helps to use a color picker in a digital software to help identify how color is affected by lighting. It also helps you determine where color is plotted on the color wheel. You will also find shifts of temperature portrayed through color. For example, you'll find that shadows are a pastel blue and highlights on the walls are a light yellow. I know in my personal experience, this has helped immensely, not only in digital art practices, but in physical painting practices as well. And most importantly, take your time. Put care into each element of your composition. The hard work and determination will pay off in the finalization of your product. And that concludes my video. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.